Welcome back to the studio, everybody. My name is Jim, and in this video, we're talking salt and pepper shakers. More specifically, secret salt and pepper shakers. So if you're curious, get ready. The secret salt shaker is simple, effective, and a crowd pleaser. And because there aren't holes in the top, you can glaze them however you want. The secret, however, is the bottom. That is the opening and the fill area for these shakers. Here's how it works. So, your basic secret salt shaker. So you have this kind of volcano shape or this funnel, and this is where all the salt is stored. When you shake it, the salt comes up the side and then it goes down through that hole. So if this hole is really large and you're gonna get a ton of salt, maybe you want a ton of salt. If it's for pasta, boiling water, or for cooking, big opening is great. One, two shakes, you get a couple teaspoons right there. If it's for food though, a smaller opening is better. You don't wanna just drench your food in salt. Personally, I love this because you can glaze the top different colors. Got some gold and silver luster. Shake me. Got some Mishima on there with two different glazes. The two that you saw, S&P, silver and gold luster. A silly but a fun one. Shake, 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 shake your booty. So they're super fun, they make great gifts. So let me show you how to make this. I'm using a little less than half a pound of porcelain. Go all the way through the bottom. Then I angle the opening so there's less clay for the bottom funnel. Split the wall. Now the taller your funnel is, the more salt you can hold before it spills over. But if it's too tall and you can't dome over the clay, then it doesn't work. Sometimes I'll use a back of a paintbrush or a chopstick to get this hole the exact size of what I want. Time to close it up. When you collar the clay in, it gets thicker. So in order to kind of close off the top of a form, you can collar, then pull a wall, collar, then pull a wall, and then close it. If you leave a little bit of clay, you can always cut it off. And usually, having a little extra lets you push it down and really puff up the inside of your hollow form. I'm gonna cut off the extra, maybe a little bit of an undercut so I can grab it with my hand, and then a metal rib. A little too much up there. I will cut a little bit off. Just a little. I try to add spirally effects with the rib as I scrape off that layer of slip. And that's it. What's nice about these shakers, they're so small that once they dry, they kind of pop off of the board by themselves. The last step is to cut a larger opening in the bottom so you can feed salt into the shaker. So take an X-Acto knife and I hold it in my hand and rotate the shaker. It's much easier than doing the other way around. I go easy on the first cut because you can always cut more. Second time around, I'll make sure the cut is nice and flush to the inside of the shaker. When you want to fill it, you take your salt, you pour it through that hole in the bottom, and you're finished. You may have to kind of roll it around to get the salt to feed in. So that is your basic secret salt and pepper shaker tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. My name is Jim, and whenever possible, be sure to make, do, and learn. Oh, wow. a lot of pepper in there. I'm saving all that I can. <laughs>